All right, I'm back. Hi, guys. Did, did, did you have to go to a different chat just so I know for the future? Like, did you have to come out, come back, or were you just in the same chat and now I'm just back? I'm curious. Let me see if Simon will. You think Simon will clean this for me? Nah. <laughs> I shouldn't bug him. <laughs> Shouldn't bug poor guy join his TV out there, out and back. Oh, thanks, thanks, uh, for Dabbler. Appreciate that. Yeah, exit and start again. So, hopefully, well, everybody in that other chat is going to figure it out and come over here. So, this I bought this book a while ago. Um, obviously, it came out in 2000. So, 2017 was the last time I did any type, you know, a couple years ago where I was super involved, you know, interested in watercolor and I did all this stuff. So it's been two years. That's why I titled this video watercoloring for the first time in two years. Hi again, Judy. Because uh, so, this is what we're going to do. So I, I'm sure quite a few of you have this book from when we all bought it. I've got me some tabs in here. Look how gorgeous that is. Elements of Design. So this is acrylic, it's sent, uh, acrylic on panel. So not all of this is a, um, is necessarily watercolor. This is talking more about shapes, drawing, not the. Oh yeah, look at that. That this this type of stuff interests me. Hi again, Glenda. Hi ah, Sandy, welcome, welcome Barbara from New Mexico. Welcome. Speaking of Barb. Barbara, Barb, is does, is Barb streaming today? Does, does she do her uh, Drama Free Fridays once a month? Or, like, I think she went to once a month, right? That was a while ago, so I mean, two years ago, so I don't know what Barb is doing these days. So maybe this, this is more maybe about drawing rather than painting. So maybe I have to take something out of Danielle Donaldson's book. I just love the art in here. Oh, yeah. So remember, <laughs> I did this exercise in that other journal I was showing, excuse me, the other day, where it looked like, oh, I can hiccups. I was painting a couple of them, and then one of them ended, it ended up looking like an ice cream cone rather than a shell. The first Fridays of the month. Thanks, Julie. First Friday. Barb, and she's Barb Owens here on YouTube, right? Barb, is she go by Barb Owens over here? Yeah, so this is less about painting and more about the drawing. Look at those fishies. Here, fishy, 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 fishy. Look at those beta fish. Let's see. Use pen to draw over the beta fish outlines. Oh, so it's telling you in this book to actually use your pen to doodle over your shapes. It's not teaching me how to, how to do the watercolor shapes. That's just, yeah, stuff in the back. So this is more about... The doodling and drawing of these rather than the um, painting of them. So, good book, just not what we're looking for right now. I also found it, like I said, the Journal Junkies Workshop. This is one of the first art journaling books I bought. It's been out for a while. It's a Northlight book, so I don't even know if you can still buy them, my friends. My apologies. You can probably buy them used somewhere. FW Media. So, this was copyright 2010. So, yeah, the 2010 is when I started art journaling. And um, I really enjoyed this book. I'm just I'm just gonna find that exercise we were just doing in my last video, and how I was in. And he they have a lot of different thoughts and exercises in this particular book. You could probably get it digitally. Yes, Barb Owen here on YouTube. Thank you so much, Julie. Amazing, amazing artist. And wonderful friend, of course. So, they, I mean, you look at the back then. This is all the, the only stencils we had, my friends. This was before. <laughs> this was back when we, all we had was Crafters Workshop stencils. And there was only a couple of them that were even decorative. Most of the Crafters Workshop stencils then were like journaling ones that you would do, you know, use on your scrapbook pages with titles and stuff. We're going to do a... Um, an exercise from the Daniel Donaldson book. So here's basic training. Yeah, watercolor washes. 
sponging, stamping, lifting salt, stippling, stenciling. Oh, yeah. So this is how, see, this was the exercise. Watercolor, he used watercolor pencils or they used watercolor pencils at the beginning um, and then filled it in with paint, whatnot. So this is the exercise from this book was the catalyst to that. Uh, and look, for example, they watercolor pencil and then they used an old Crayola, like a thick Crayola marker to blend it out. So like he shows you the basic technique and then and then shows you ways that you can, you know, change it up to to make it a little bit even more exciting in your journal. Look at how cute. Not cute. Look how awesome that is. Must use a flat, not must. Did use a flat brush. I love that. So again, I don't know if you can still find this book, but I love this type of thing. Like their their style was definitely unique, right? Yeah. <clears throat> they they're you know, these guys didn't come from the scrapbooking, stamping world that, you know, Julie Faith Van Balzer, Tracy Bautista, uh, uh, Donna Downey, like all, you know, all of uh, us that came from the scrapbooking, stamping world. So definitely completely different style than any of that. So I really like... You can check out that book if you can find it. It's 10 years old now, but um, lots of wonderful inspiration and, and a definitely a different, different style. The Journal Junkies guys were a different style. I don't know. Maybe they have more books out now. I don't know. Welcome, Claire Crafty. Welcome, Donna. Hi again, Julie Miko. So I suggest this. Oh, Daniel Donaldson. So, you know, a couple years ago, um, so 2015 Journal Junkies Workshop, that's when I started doing that other stuff with watercolor. And then for a couple of years, I stopped again. Um, and then I found Daniel Donaldson and uh, Anna Victoria Calderon and Skillshare. It was really Skillshare that kind of, hi, Ellie, uh, that got me into it. So Daniel Donaldson, she had a, a workshop, an online one. Again, this is another Artist Network book. I don't know if they're still available or not. And she might, she, and Daniel Donaldson has more than one book. I don't think I have her other one. Creative Girl. I don't know if I ever bought Creative Girl or not. I don't think I did. I don't know if it was necessarily my style. So I never bought it. So let's see. I just love how she, I love when I see people that have drawn their tools and paint brushes and stuff. My apologies for the autofocus, my friends. <sighs> Drinking some Ensure. So she's talking about altered books and different handmade journals. Loose leaf portfolios with alphabet practice. Clipboard. File sorter, daily practice. To grow as an artist, it's important to infuse every day with something creative, even if it's only for five minutes. It's equally important to know that it's okay to set your art aside and deal with life stuff. And apparently for years, <laughs> if you're me. <laughs> Working full time, caring for children or parents, the common cold or just complete lack of confidence or mojo are common occurrences that can put us on pause. Again, it happens. Try to get out of the mindset that honoring your time as an artist means that you need to pick up some sort of pencil, pen, or brush, or that by walking away from your supplies, somehow you are not as committed to growing as an artist as much as others are. I want you to use this daily method as your inspiration gathering tool. No sketching, doodling, or mark making is necessary. Each day, file something away in this folder, in this, in this file sorter. A coaster with a cool logo from your favorite pub, a printout of a photo of your daughter sent, sent to you in text, a leaf from a walk you really needed to take, a quote from a randomly selected page in a book you have been meaning to read. You get the idea. Fill it with bits of inf inspiration, and when you need encouragement, sit at your studio and pull out the treasures from the date that the, the date that correlates with the current date and see what you can imagine with them. So I guess she uses a file folder to collect inspiration. So color practice, this is part of the uh, controlled washes and stuff is what, uh, 
And then Daniel Donaldson, she has some amazing stamps that go with this. I'll show well, when we get there, you'll see. Oh Eileen, it's making me want those stamps again. It's really making me want those stamps. Because she has the stamps to make your own, you know, paint chip exercises. This is composition practice. Bears. Like, yeah, this there, she has a stamp that's this what like no, I don't think it's this big in real life. I don't know. Eileen might be able to tell us if she's in chat, but she has a stamp of a watercolor palette. Like, I love oh, man. I'm really oh. anyways. That's joggles. I guess I, I can only find them on joggles, and I can't order from joggles, so I guess I'm safe. I guess I'm safe. Beautiful color inspiration. Look at that coach. One point perspective defined. C is for chairs and coaches. And chairs. Beautiful eye candy in this book as well. Welcome, Crystal. You have a blank stand for color swatches accompanied with waffles. Yes, waffles, Jane. That's the one I was talking about earlier that I know... Zandra, Jean, I don't know if I need bought them or not. I, I don't know if Janet bought them either. Those those uh stamps from waffles. Oh, especially the the color wheel one, and you can buy the dyes and oh sweet goodness. Why am, I shouldn't be thinking of this? Drink some insure, Paula. <laughs> G is for green. Green G. Perfect pair. Oh, then we might we might have to do the perfect pair. There's a quite a few step outs on that one. Let's see. Look at this house. Oh, isn't that cool? How she how she painted this on all the different rooms. Oh, I love that. Look at that. I love that. Well, the different color inspiration. Look at these cats. I forgot about this. I mean, look at those guys. Oh, you didn't buy them, Janet? You know, they weren't they weren't cheap those those stamps, but they were cool. Look at these people. Mermaids. Mermaid tails. One of those beautiful flowers. Pretty po yeah. So this is this this I took their when I took her class online. These posies, right? This uh, this particular technique is the first thing I learned. Actually, let's do those. Uh, this is inspiring. I want to do it all. Q is for quotes. And I don't know. Maybe Daniel Donaldson has another book out since this one. This is a couple, like I said, a couple years old. Oh, I love this book. Her other book, it was not um, that she, the first one, The Creative Girl or whatnot. That was brought out like five years before this one. Not necessarily my style, but I absolutely, look at that cat with the mermaid tail. Oh, look at him or her. <laughs> or the koala with the, oh, no, no, that's a mouse with the mermaid tail. That was koala. How cute. And that's like one of the geodes. That's that was what the class was about. Anyways, beautiful book, lots of inspiration in here. I absolutely love her watercolor style. Look at that. <laughs> so whimsical and painterly and beautiful. Just a lot of inspiration in the back. All right, I think we're gonna do pretty posies. P is for posies. P is for Paula. Prepare your palette. All right. <clears throat> Let us see. We are going to go back and go right into this watercolor journal because this is the one that I'm going to use, I think. Yes, we're just going to restart. Fresh page. Just like that. All right. 
So again, we are working from the art of creative watercolor inspiration techniques for imaginative drawing and painting by Daniel Donaldson. You can check out her website. Like I said, I originally took a class from her, an online from her website, uh, an online class right from her website. So I don't know. Let me just see if she has Daniel Donaldson. See if I can find her website. It's just DanielDonaldson.com. DanielDonaldson.com. But she used to, anyways, years ago, run uh, classes out through her website. So, oh, I'm going to date it, Claire. That's for sure. All right. So we are doing pieces for posies. We're doing some pretty posies. This project is like watching fireworks. And, and that's why I'm choosing it, because I like me some blooms and stuff. Yeah. Excuse me. Drinking some insure. All right. This project is like watching fireworks. As you paint each posy, the color will mix and mingle and quietly burst with beauty. If, after reading through the steps, you are concerned it might be too difficult for you, that's understandable. Take a step back and practice this technique on small scraps of paper, one posy at a time. So we need some supplies. We need some uh, dry uh, heat gun, says craft dryer. Heat gun, no. We need creative essentials, page 10. The heck is creative essentials, page 10? Danielle, you know, gotta go back over here. Creative Essentials. Oh, Creative Essentials to her is her essentials, artist grade watercolors, watercolor only brushes, 140 pound paper, mechanical pencil, a mixing palette with wells, clean water, paper towels, table salt, ruler, scissors. That's her basic, that's her basic set, kit. Okay, <clears throat> we got that. Uh, she's using Faber-Castell pit pens, pattern paper, sewing machine, optional. That's definitely going to be optional for no sewing machine over here. Um, sketch or Bristol paper. Okay, so we're going to prepare our palette. Prior to pre-mixing your colors in the wells of your palette, choose two pieces of pattern paper larger than six by six. After you complete your illustration, you'll use them to create a double mat for your finished piece. I am sure you're a pro at this process by now. But try changing up your choice to be sure you're giving an equal playing time to all your palette. Hmm. So I guess they want you to prepare, choose colors based on the scrapbook paper you're going to mount it on. Oh, I got the hiccups now. Excuse me. All right. Step number two. The focal point for this composition is a large, medium, and small posy. The remainder of the posies will be filled in later. So refer to the example for approximate size of placement. Rather than using a pencil to find the first posy, use clear water to paint three large petal shapes that connect to the center. In fact, I remember how to do this. This is number six. I'm gonna go into a number eight brush, I think. No, that's a 10. Yeah, we'll just use a 10. Uh, Prince of Neptune, Windsor and Newton. Hi, Tess, welcome. We're just gonna use whatever watercolor is up in this, up in this one. Let me, all right. She likes to use a palette, so I'm gonna clean this one out. And she, that class I took, like there was this matchbook. Um, dang it. I wonder if I still have access. I was years ago. I, was, I think you get lifetime access, but who knows? But there was this cool like matchbook thing. And I, it was an awesome, it was a beautiful, uh, cool class. I'm going to have to Google that. I'm going to have to go look and see if I can, because I never did finish it. I watched every video <laughs> and all of that. All right. So we've got a little shell this is just ceramic dollarama cost me a dollar something if you want to be more fancy you can find nicer fancy ones in uh on amazon this is from medine this is actual ceramic one of my absolute favorite things but the wells aren't that big so i've got to clean this bad boy i love palettes like anyway let me get some water let us see what colors do we want to use I don't know, this is the brightest, a really bright red. And maybe we'll mix it red and yellow and basic primary. Something. So I'm just adding a little to my palette. I already got, it's already wet over here. Sweet loving goodness. 
All right, I just need a paper towel. Excuse me for a moment. I still have Jan. I if she's watching the corner. I still have it, Jan. <laughs> All right. So the first step in this particular technique, I'm going to get a clean brush, clean all the paint off my, oh, they're mixed, it's moving over there. That's the thing about this palette, all the colors are already moving. So the first step of this technique, we're using plain water, which you can't see right now, and I'm having a hard time seeing. So I'm, I'm just painting water, and you'll see, I'm connecting with them in the middle. So I'm making a three-point petal, connecting them in the middle, and it's the water's pooled quite a bit. So this is Canson uh, watercolor paper, Canson XL, 140-pound watercolor. All right, you can't see that. Let me see if I can do, 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 see how. Okay, come on, my friends. Nope, 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 maybe. Hard to see. It's just wet. So what I let's see. So we did that. <clears throat> you should be able to see the petal shapes and how they connect the center. Add a bit more water if the paint is already dried. All right. Well, we haven't added any paint yet, Danielle. Okay. Drop in color. Fully load a round brush with paint from one of the wells of your mixing palette. Hold your brush perpendicular to your paper. Touch the paper with the tip of your brush. Drop in color in the center. Watch how it blooms outwards. Sounds good. So I gotta find a center. Ho ho ho, look at that. So I'm just, so perpendicular, straight up and down. Dropping in the red. Let's add a little yellow. And that's one thing I like when you, when you have watercolors like this, I love when you can't control it. That's what I like about watercolor. Drop it. Let me see. I'm going to go back over here and get some better yellow. Fresh yellow that it's, that's not mixed in over here. And I just perpendicular. And I think originally when she teaches that this, this, you know, in the book or on her, in her, online class uh, I can't remember what I was saying I think she mostly just starts from the center from the center out all right let's paint another one over here and as my water gets a little bit more colored <laughs> Right now, though, my water is pretty clear. So, this prince, I, I forgot how much water this these Neptune brushes hold, my friends. Water and pigment, I totally forgot. All right, gotta find the way my lights are in this room. It's an awkward. It's hard to see where I've wet the paper. Let us try a little bit of. Ultramarine or something over here. Now, see, I definitely, with this particular one, I obviously, I couldn't see where my page was wet and I didn't put enough like space like on that one. Know what I mean, Vern? Like see how the, the center of that then is too, too thick. Let's see. This time I'm not gonna join them in the center. I'm gonna leave about a quarter of an inch. I know it's hard for you guys to see. Oh, I lied, that one just joined. Just a little bit, all right. Especially the number, this is number 10, is definitely holding a lot of paint and water. All right, so I'm just perpendicular, tap it in. Tap, tap, tap. Just from the center. Mm -hmm. 
let me dab in some blue on this one to see what happens. Not much because it wasn't that wet. So I'm just holding up. Look how my hand is shaking like crazy over here. Let's just do some splots, see what happens. Maybe I'm using too big of a brush for this technique. Yeah, the way my lighting is, it's sure hard to be able to see where my paper is, like to where my paper's wet. All right, what color should we do this? Well, we're just gonna continue on with the red, yellow, and primary colors we've got going on here. Again, out straight up and down. Just tapping. Yeah, a little bit more saturation. And I could probably see what happens if I dot over here. Still a little damp over here. Or maybe over here. Who knows? I don't know. Could make it worse, could make it better. This type of water, like I said, this type of water coloring is fun. It's just, it's not even, look, that's already dry. That's just about letting the watercolor do whatever it wants to do. And new! Oh, I just dipped my brush in my coffee again. And it's my good Princeton Neptune one. Okay, I'm gonna have to move that to this. I'm gonna have to get a different cup that has a lid on it. The last thing I need is coffee cream to be up in my ferrule. All up in this. I mean, coffee's not too bad on your watercolor brushes. It's the cream. It's the cream part that's sweet. Did, it, did I, I might've drank so much. Oh yeah, so it didn't quite go. <laughs> it didn't go all the way down into the coffee, my friends. Didn't go down into the coffee. Actually, I can salvage. I can still drink it without avoiding those parts. Mm. Don't drink your watercolors, my friends. Especially some of these. They could have chemical, you know, minerals and stuff. That's bad. Don't, don't, don't. Uh, I'm dr only drinking it because it avoided. I didn't. The brush didn't actually go into the coffee. <laughs> like I said, painting with coffee or tea could be fun, but you don't want to add the cream. That's for sure. Not that, like, on this channel, this isn't a normal thing. We've drank, uh, when I say we, I mean me. We, <laughs> we've drank, what, dilutions before? Not not straight. <laughs> but I've had, like, spray in my cup or something stupid. Okay, I'm putting that over there. So, do as I say, not as I do. Back over here. Let us add some more yellow, I think. Tipping. Drop in some yellow. So thank you, Daniel Donaldson, for the inspiration today. I like how that's good. And again, this this will be the how these turn out depends on the brush. I'm sorry, the paper you're using a lot too, right? On your your blooms. This one will go off the page. And this is something I have to practice too, right? Like with the puddles. Like, so if I'm wetting the paper, am I putting too much water on there? Like it's creating a pool. This time I'm going to start with yellow. No, oh, you won't be able to see that. Let's do more of a blue then. This. I 
I definitely have. You can tell over here I have too much water saturation on the, that side. And I'm getting those hard lines because I've got too much water over there. Let me see if I can drop in some red at the top of this one. Yeah, look at this. Lots, too much water over here. And if you have too much water, then your blooms aren't, it's not going to go as nice. Oh, I like that. Hi, Debbie. And this is so fun and easy. Like, this is something you can do with your, you know, kids or grandchildren too, right? Like, you're painting with water. If I remember correctly, in the class too, and I said this is a few years ago, I remember that she had the other way of doing it. Um, dang it, and I'm doing it backwards. If I remember correctly, she would also take the paint and start with like a drop of Welcome, Carol Adams. And then, so she would drop the paint and then somehow she would do the flower and just touch it so that it would go up like that. Like paint the, the petal, I should say, not the flower. So paint the, the put, drop it down first, paint the shape you want, and then connect them. For some reason, I remember that. I guess that was a few years ago. Yeah, today I haven't done any organizing or cleaning yet. So I definitely need, I probably not live, but I definitely need to do work, uh, continue that goal today. I don't know what part I'm going to clean, but. I love, I just love how, how the wa watching the watercolors move in it and blend within themselves is one of my favorite things. So again, right now I'm using these, I believe are, uh, if I look at that there, those, God, I don't know. They're artist grade watercolors. I can't tell if these, if what I'm using right now is Daniel Smith core, it might be core actually. And like the more this dries, it's just gonna continue to bloom and continue to um, do its thing, right? Gosh, it feels uh, it feels good yet also intimidating, you know, putting paint down for the first after doing so much, right? After filling journals of of swatches and watercolor and whatever to not doing anything for a long time is. Feels foreign, yet good at the same time. Welcome, Heidi. Welcome, Laura. Kind of looks like hummingbirds. Oh, yeah. Kind of like hummingbirds. And then this is where you can go over afterwards with, with, you know, a pen or whatnot. Look, there's too much pooling going on down here. Do some doodling on it afterwards. I like how this one's doing. See, I'm it, it when you start getting those hard lines, oh, no, I haven't watercolored in a long time. So terminology, give me, I think it's gonna be a couple weeks before I remember all the right words and that. But I'm getting that hard water line, which means that I've used too much water. Um but it's fun. How many do we got here? Do we have an odd number? No, of course we have an even number. I'll do one over here then at the top. And this is just primary colors, my friends. I'm just using red, blue, and yellow. I don't know. I've got in my hand is itchy. 
All right, I think I'm going to do one down here somewhere. Maybe just off the page. So not rather than three petals, maybe I'll just do one petal for the illusion that the rest of it is, the rest of it's hanging out over here somewhere. Let's see, maybe just do mostly yellow, little red on this one. Just try to dip. Just try to lay in the color from the bottom of the page so it's shooting that way. Hopefully my sound's okay, my friends. I, my face is about four inches, not even, from the camera. So I apologize if you're listening. Heavy breathing <laughs> or anything like that. I don't know. All right. Actually, I think we're going to have... Another little guy over here. Too much water. That's the thing about these brushes, right? If you if I'm if you're used to using a student grit, you know, a cheaper cheaper is not the right word. Nothing that there's anything wrong with any of those brushes. But sometimes, you know, if you're used to using a certain brush and then you go to one of these ones that have like this um Prince and Neptunes are are hybrids, not the right word. What is it, my friend? It's both synthetic and not, I believe these are. Or are Prince and Neptune's all synthetic? They might be a combination. Thanks, guys. Uh, thank you so much, Heidi. I appreciate that. Appreciate it. All right. And tap it over here. And I need to add a little yellow to it. Like I said, there's nothing, you know, it's fun to just do something like this sitting on the couch. It, you'll never get the same things twice, <laughs> that's for sure. And to me, it's therapeutic watching the bloom, like watching them, watching the, the watercolor bloom across the paper. And I might, you know, I it's still me, still have to have some splots. Still, some things will never change, my friends. All right. I really, I forgot how much I like these Neptune brushes, that's for sure. So we did that there. This is Canson Mixed Media, or not Mixed Media. I got to stop saying Mixed Media. Canson XL watercolor paper. So we, is Eileen here? I bought, I'm going to set this aside. We'll let it dry. Let's see. We'll try to, let's go close on this bad boy. See, so it's doing its thing, granulating everywhere. Not just granulating, blooming. So then sometimes, you know, we get a little muddy mess over here. That's okay. We got some water lines. It's all good. And it's still moving. None of these are dry, so it's it's still moving. This was a hot mess. Remember, I didn't do that part right. But anyway, so we have this. Uh, so a couple years ago, so back in 2017, when I was doing all this watercoloring and whatnot, I bought B paper, watercolor paper, and I also bought arches. I've never used arches. Um, you see all the watercolor I did, all that. Blah, 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 blah. So let's bust it out, my friends. Um, why not? We we'll use the most fanciest watercolor paper I own <laughs> with the most rudimentary well, no, I shouldn't say this technique is rudimentary. That's not the right word. So this is just the Arches Aquarelle watercolor paper, 100% pure cotton, 12 sheets, 9 by 12. Never used before. Don't know how it's going to react. But why am, I, why am I holding on to the good stuff, my friends? Use it. I just have to, uh, I'm going to cut it in half though first. I don't want to use a full sheet. We don't, we don't need a 9 by 12. I get my. We can just cut off a piece or two.
This is thick. How 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 heavy did I say this was? 100% cotton. 100 Oh, this is 140 pound 300 G's. 140 pound. Obviously there's different I different poundage I assume. Never used this before. This this, this one sheet of paper probably cost what $2 or something crazy. But what am I going to do? Treasure it for another two years without doing one thing of watercolor? Silly, right? Break out the good stuff. <laughs> Claire Crafty owns one Neptune. It's lovely. Especially for wet on wet type techniques that I like, I think. Uh, thanks, so Crystal. Happy that you're able to stop by. All right. We'll use the same colors because I still have the. I'll just add a little bit more. little yellow over here yeah sometimes you know for me anyway sometimes I just have to inspire myself if that means going through old things that I used to do or have done in the past and recreating that's that's just how I inspire myself all right is there a hmm, I wonder I think there is a good side and a bad side right <laughs> wait a second hold the fort there is a hmm, they look the same how do I know what's the good side and the bad side? There's a rough side and a smooth side. I think this is the smooth side. Who knows? We're just going to do it. We're going to do it. I'm going to lay down some water. I've never... So, the fan... Uh, yeah. I don't know if I've used pure cotton paper in any form. You know? In, from any brand, not just arches. Too scared, right? Treasuring my stuff. Well, that's it. We're breaking cycles over here. No, no more treasuring of the art supplies. Well, no, I still treasure it. But we are going to use use the good stuff, my friends. All right. So it's definitely not pooling as much as on that Canson paper. That's for sure. I can see that it's already kind of absorbed it. Let's tap in. Everybody ready? Can you see? My apologies. Whatever, you know, techie setup I got going on, my friends, this is a low-budget production. We are using what we have, right? I am uh, returning to YouTube with using what I have where I am. So that means that sometimes my camera doesn't focus correctly. Or autofocuses, I should say, over and over and over again. And I don't have much control over, like, the height of my camera and all that type of stuff. But you have to start somewhere. You have to, so I'm just doing what I can with what I have at the moment. And hopefully invest in the channel later on. But if I didn't, you know, if I said to myself, oh, well, I can't stream because I can't control my camera zoom and I can't do this and I don't have this light, then I'd never stream. Use what you have where you are. All right. So that's definitely more of a control. Like, see how that's controlled? Control is not the right word. Yeah, I guess it is the right word. It's definitely a smoother. Uh, dang it. I need to go. I, tonight, I need to read a watercolor book or two and remind myself. Uh, Re-remind myself with the terminology can you hear simon snoring all right interesting so let's put paint another one underneath it wire bound arches i don't yeah do they even buy uh, uh, i thought arches are only sold in like books or ginormous things like sh uh, single sheets of paper right I can remember, you know, when I when I taped the when I taped my DVD in Colorado, 
uh, Pam Carrick and I taped on the same day. And um, part of her DVD, uh, and I think her DVDs, the art, the, that particular one she filmed the same day as I did was Art at the Speed of Life one, I think. So I watched her, like she would take a full sheet of watercolor paper and cut it down and fold it up and created uh, books out of that. And I'm pretty sure she used some fancy arches paper to cut down. I, that's what I need to do, especially now that I cleaned off my desk. I actually have space. <laughs> create a, a nice kind of meandering or accordion folded type of book made out of a full sheet of watercolor paper. So I'm just painting again. The uh, painting with water. It is tinted a little bit now because my water is tinted. Got a little tint to it, but you can't, you still can't, you can't see it. And I might not be using the right side of the paper, my friends. I have no idea if there's a right and wrong side. But I can definitely, the way the paper is, the way the paper is absorbing the water compared to that Canson, night and day, my friends. Like the Canson, here I see a very smooth, um, the wash, the paper, I can tell that the paper, you see a smooth sheen, right? Whereas the on the Canson, um, watercolor 140 pound watercolor paper I could see pools of water where this is like a more of an even even sheen to it but I guess that's like I said it's the quality of the fiber cotton fibers or paper fiber so again I'm just tapping just dropping in the watercolor from the top down oh look at how that is spreading out my friends I, beautiful wow Eileen, are you out there? You'd be proud of me for using my arches. <laughs> Glenda saw arches. It was in a pad that was three by nine. Five sheets of arches just landed on Christy's front porch. <laughs> Wonderful, Christy. Thanks, guys. Is it hot or cold press? Claire Crafty Branson asks me. Um, let's see. Cold press. Cold pressed. Cold pressed 140 pound water. So this is like the like entry level <laughs> arches paper, right? <laughs> the entry level. <laughs> I want to drop some, I want to drop some yellow in there. And I think now that I add that little bit of yellow, let's see, I'm just going to add some splots over here. Welcome, Marisha. I am Trontonian, born and raised. I, I'm currently on the in Whitby over here in the east of Toronto, but uh, I'm a Trontonian, born in Toronto General. Welcome. This is this is a newbie stream. I am zero. I am not. This is the <laughs> this is how not to watercolor demo. We're just having fun over here. But welcome, welcome, fellow Canadian, fellow Torontonian. Love it. All right, so we'll just do over here a little bit, another one. That's one thing that for some reason with brushes or like I said, I never took art school. So I, I've never, I, I always think that I have to hold my brush a certain way and I don't push down. You know what I mean? Like I'm not using the the bristles to my benefit know what i mean Vern? <laughs> like, tap in it's hard to see like i said my my lighting in here i i can't for for myself i can't find out i can't see where the water where the water is on the paper to see if if, it, if it's wet or not Lawrence and Allen. Oh, well, yeah, I, I lived at, uh, <laughs> I lived by Yorkdale for a long time, in fact, my friend. 
I well not a long time. I lived uh before I met Simon in, in 2004 and five, I lived over there at Lawrence and Dufferin Dufferin Lawrence? Bathurst and Lawrence. So Lawrence and the Island that, that by Yorkdale, I lived over there for a long time. But I was born and raised in Scarborough. Born and raised in Scarborough, lived in Etobicoke, lived out, lived over by Yorkdale for a bit, and then lived in the lake on the lake shore in Etobicoke. Then went to Burlington, and now I'm in Whitby. <laughs> the artful dabbler managed to find a block. The last one, web special. From Irish art. So happy. Can't wait. Awesome. Jane considers there's post uh, arches postcard blocks entry level. They're the most affordable arches. I do have some other. Ooh, wait a second. Hold the fort. I bought this when I bought. Oh, yeah. When I bought the Daniel Smith. And we'll just put this off to the side and let that do that. The watercolor starter kit. I bought this on Amazon. It was from Hyatt's, though. It, but that came with fluid. I remember Jean really liked fluid watercolor paper. And this is a cold fresh, cold fresh. Drink some coffee. I need to buy. I need to buy. I need some coffee. Cold press finished watercolor paper. This is 15 sheets. But it came with this. I don't know if they still sell them on Amazon. I was say I bought these like five years ago. Um, it came with the the primary colors the original the the first daniel smith set i bought and it came in a nice little thing i don't know if they still have it, it was it was a hyatt's daniel smith watercolor essential set so i do have postcards from and i i remember jane uh excuse me jean music our music scrap jean really liked that fluid paper i really wish i knew where my uh what is this? <laughs> what what did I do with that B paper, my friends? What did I do with that stack? I'm like, oh look, there's this, and then I don't have it anymore. I don't know. Don't see. Oh well. Back to this. What am I trying? That should I try that paper, Claire? Yorkdale is changing a lot. I can only imagine what it. So if I I lived in Yorkdale, two thousand five, so fifteen years ago, I can only imagine what it's like. Oh, I'm sure completely different now. That's for sure. And that was like before Yorkdale had its super special fancy expansion, right? But that's where Simon and I met. Simon and I's first date was in Yorkdale at the Yorkdale Mall. I think I'm using the other, the wrong side of the paper, my friends. What happens if I left this completely dry? Can I use the other side? Well, why am I? Out? You can do anything you want. <laughs> no one, nothing, no one's stopping me from using the other side of the paper. How dare you watercolor on the other side of the paper? All right, let's dip in some. That time I added a little bit more water to the paper. As you can tell, it's definitely blooming faster. And add some over here, make it a little bit more saturated. I don't know if that's, that's probably not completely dry yet. How not to watercolor, my friends. How not to watercolor. Hmm. The way this is going on, I don't like the way what's going on. I don't like that what's going on over there. One, two, three, and one more over here. Interesting. But I, I think I'm using the wrong side of the paper. <laughs> uh, now that my my water, my clean water is a little bit more, a little stained, you can you'll be able to see where I'm putting the the water at first. Can you hear Simon snoring? My apologies.
man. But, you know, what What do I expect? I haven't picked up the, a, a paintbrush in two years. I'm not going to be creating masterpieces, you know. <laughs> like, I got to go a little bit, be a little bit easier on myself. I absolutely love weed, Marshall. Absolutely love weed, except I can't smoke it anymore because I have something called cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. I think Google CHS if you smoke weed every day. Uh, I suggest and start feeling sick. I suggest you educate yourself on cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. But we love weed in this up in this channel, my friend. <laughs> Thanks for the troll. It's not a troll because actually we do love weed over here. So <laughs> I love trolls. You're not supposed to feed the trolls, my friends. But sometimes it's fun. Sometimes it's fun. Not everybody in the chat loves weed, but this girl does. But. Just be careful. We could have, you know. <laughs> Don't feed. I know, Cheryl, I'm not supposed to feed the trolls. I know I'm not supposed to feed the trolls. But sometimes. So I did me some splots. Should I do some splots in just water to get those type of blooms? Like I just did the splots in yellow. Let's just do some with just the, the clear water. See what Making a mess. All right, put that off to the side. Claire wants to see us to see me use the same. And we'll just, and this is how I play, my friends, right? Like, practice, like not practice, not the right word. Experiment. So we use Canson Mixed Media paper with this technique. We just use the most expensive paper I have, which is some um, arches. And um, although I think I use the wrong side of the paper, but you know, we'll try later when that's dry. <laughs> I only have 25 likes. Why don't you add to the dislikes, my friend? Add to the dislike for me, please. All right. Let's see how many dislikes I can get. <laughs> Fuck. Excuse me, I gotta start swear bombing over here. I love that. Just like that guy the other day. Oh, your channel has 18,000 subscribers and you only have three or 30 people watching. Yeah. Yeah, because my child's 10 years old, and I neglected it for five. <laughs> so, so, what I'm mad, especially if I'm feeling good, my friends, don't get my back up. You're going to start hearing me F-bomb. No, you never know who's watching. Calm down, Polly. You never know who's watching. All right, let's just get the fluid paper out. <laughs> oh, I love me some 10-year-olds. Like to come into chats and think they're all big and bad. Don't even know how to spell. Come on. At least you're going to troll. Be a good one for crying out loud. Think of something original. Next, and then the next thing, they'll go, oh, you're ugly. Oh, your art is ugly. Oh, bring on. Think of something good, my friend. <laughs> I need coffee is what I need. <laughs> oh, welcome, Jessica. Now, where did I just put it, my friends? I just had that thing, that whole. Did I put it under there? Where did I put it? That little container with the fluid paper in it. How can I have something in my? Well, you already know. Nothing ever changes when it comes to that, my friends. Whether it's been ten years, two years, five years, same old thing over here. Oh, well. I don't know where that other one went, but I do have a backup of this anyway. So I bought this one at Curry's. How can I just lose something in two seconds? That's like, oh, my God. I don't even know. Anyway, wherever I put it. I do have another one anyway. For some reason, this one's already off the block. I know it's in the little Daniel Smith thing. It went to the right. Exactly, Jane. <laughs> it got swallowed up by my art room in two seconds. What? What? It's like, it's, it's clean over here. That's why I don't understand. It must be under. 
I don't but anyways it's the same fluid block I bought this one at Curry's doesn't matter anyway do you want Jessica no idea Five bitches. Again, we're just dealing with 12 year olds, especially if like, you know, 10, 12, 14 year olds. <sighs> Go on Twitch, my friends. Go find yourself somewhere else. Twitch and TikTok. Go nuts over there. I need a. Uh... Well, I ripped that piece of paper right off. Okay, so this one I'll be able to tell which is the right side. No, wait, no. Wait. So I'm assuming if it opens like this, this is going to be the good side, right? The good side. I'm just talking about everybody in general, my friends. Kids. Welcome to YouTube in 2020. Sorry about that, guys. I'm trying to keep a. I used to never like, um, you know, trolls, but I'm not supposed to feed the trolls. Yeah, both sides are good, just different, Jane. That's right. That that makes sense in my head. All right. So this is also cold pressed 100. I don't know if I have any hot press paper, to be honest. I think a lot of what I bought was cold pressed because I do like granulation and blooms and stuff. Right. And I think it's if, if you like that type of look with your watercolors, then am I correct? Am I remembering this right? I'm uh, cold pressed paper is better because it has more tooth. Right. Just pat their heads. That's right. Claire. <laughs> So I don't know if I have any hot press at all. I'm, 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 I shouldn't say that. I probably have a pad of it somewhere. But, uh, all right, let's see. Here we go. Maybe this time I'll do one right in the middle. And I took it off the block. It was already off uh, the block on one end, like already for some weird reason, so. So I can already see how the water on here is pooling differently than how it, how I, I was able to lay it down on the arches. I guess it's just, a, what that, I guess it means it's just not absorbing as fast, right? The cotton, I don't know how much, what percentage of, of cotton is in this. All right, so I laid down my, My wash in the shape of three flower petals. Daniel Donaldson says, hold your brush perfect perpendicular. Tap it in. So you can see now that it's off the block. Well, you can't see, but it is moving. It is warping this particular paper. I guess because it's a smaller piece of paper. It's warping big time, which will affect how it my paint. I need to figure something out like, you know, like Kathy has some type of board or like whatever people use to tape their watercolor paper down so it doesn't buckle while you're working on a project. Oh, it's not enough water. This didn't move as much though, Jane. It, like, I mean, there's some movement over here, but that really concentrated in this particular paper, concentrated at the in the middle. I mean, as it dries, it'll bloom, of course, and it's gonna go, see where the paper's still wet there. See how it's pooling there? Excuse the lighting and, and uh, the zooming in and out. Man, that for, there's a lot of pigment in the middle of that one. It's that's not moving at all. I mean, it is, but not really. Oh boy, my brush wasn't clean there. Uh oh, look, 
Oh, that's why. Look, this is probably bad. See fingerprints. There's this paper. Maybe because I had that and I touched. Obviously, there's something not so good with this. Yeah. Maybe I just need to throw out this particular piece of paper from that block. Because I definitely have grease hand prints on it. and Let's see. So I'm just going to. It's a flat wash. So if you're new to my channel, how not to watercolor. I haven't watercolored in two years. Not that I was a watercolorist before that. <laughs> so. So we're just practicing. This is just fun. Look at how, I don't know, these must be cores. I got to find that book later on today too, to figure out which, what colors I'm using right now. I don't know if this is Daniel Smith or cores. I want to say core, but man, these are vibrant. Too much pigment load on that one. Hey, Josie. Claire still loves my palette bird. My palette bird. What would be my pet? Well, jog my memory. Why? My bird. Oh, over here, you see a bird? Which one? Is that what you mean by palette bird? You see something? Do you see a face? Yellow splots. But I don't know. Sometimes just creating, just even if it's the most expensive, you know. <laughs> Sometimes just the, the act. Oh, dogs are. Oh, dogs are fighting out there. Just laying paint down is good for the soul. Even if it's going to go right in the trash, doesn't matter. I don't like how that worked. But again, this one's half decent over here. That was a nice wash. But something isn't right over here. I think it was just because that piece of paper was old. It probably had, uh, like I said, it doesn't probably. It did have some type of fingerprints on it. So obviously I had grease on my hands when I had this for a long time ago. In the umber and blue. This one looks like a penguin. I see a penguin. Look, there's his beak. There's his beak and eye and eye. It looks like a penguin's little feet over here. <laughs> All right, we're going to put that to the side. I don't like the See, It didn't move. Look at how that is just like the pigment stopped there, even though it's still wet. But again, I think it might. That paper might have been damaged. Not might have. It probably was damaged. So we'll just put that off to the side because that was, and we'll try again with a different piece. Let's see what's happening over here with our arches. Yeah, it's the paper. It's old. I, I, like I said, that was the top of that block and it didn't go so well. Come on. Are we going to focus? Maybe not. So I've never used arches before. I don't know how much water to put down, you know. I don't know if I even use the right side. I definitely have the hard edges, so this might mean that I use too much water. Blame the paper. <laughs> it's not the artist, it's the paper. <laughs> I'm going to dry this. Like I said, this side's more smooth. This side's more smooth than that side. English, Paula. English. Back to over here. Yeah, I think I used the smoother side. So I'm I think I used that upside down, the arches. But we're gonna we're gonna wait till it completely dries and then paint the other side and see what happens, anyways. Um, I liked how this one turned out down here. Look, so if I turn it like this, it looks more like um a tetra a beta fish or something rather than a flower. This one. Like if I look at it, like I see his head here and like his tail. That was just, so you can see where I dropped that that orange in out uh, before. Now that's bad news over there. 
Yeah, that's bad news over there. The way it bloomed like that with that hard. Yeah, that's bad news over there. Not saying it's bad. I love how this bloomed down here. This particular one. Let me show it up close. See how. Look at that granulation, my friends. Yum. Oh, I love me some Daniel Smith granulation. I don't know. Actually, I don't know. I don't know if this is core. I wish I could remember on the top of my head. Like if I look at this, that's iridescent blue. So that's Daniel Smith. These, oh no, I must be using M grams. I am using M grams because they're juicy. These are M gram. I, can, I even said that before I went uh, for my last break. They're M grams. I can tell because they're shiny. The honey in them keeps them whatever. So the, the watercolors I'm using are M gram right now. 90. I'm 99% sure. That's pretty dope. I mean, I've tried this technique more than once. Um, like I said, years when I first started, or when I first took the class from Daniel Donaldson, I should say, online, not on Skillshare. I took Daniel, I took the Anna Victoria Calderon classes on Skillshare and the Daniel Donaldson class on her on her own website, danieldonaldson.com. Here's some, uh, the one I first started was just blue from her class. Here's some, they didn't go so well. And... Ouch. And I think originally from her class would have been these ones. And with the bunny ears was, was something from her class too. I gotta go, I gotta Google that later on and find out. If I still have access, I should still have access. I know that when you sign up for the classes, you get lifetime access, but that doesn't mean, I don't know if it's still up. That was a few years ago. Bye, Claire. Thanks for being here. How can I mix all what up in the same palette? Cheryl, I'm confused. Um, So, Mira, I've been, you know, off and on YouTube for 10 years, so... I used to stream every Wednesday and Saturday regularly. I'm just the last, this past week, getting back into my channel and my art. Um, as you can see, it's been dormant for five years. So uh, eventually, yes. Eventually, yes. I've always loved streaming Wednesdays and Saturdays. My goal is to stream Wednesday and Saturday nights like I used to at 8.30, 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, ultimately, I will work up into that point. So when I'm ready, like last time I said, oh, I'm going to do it, and I didn't. So I am... Uh, I don't know if tomorrow night at 9 p.m. I'm going to say it's my first stream. I don't know if I'm ready for that yet, but very soon. Subscribe, keep the notification on. Very soon I'll be back to my regular, uh, a regular schedule. Oh, all the different paints. Well, that's, they all, all my paint brands aren't together. That's the thing. I just couldn't remember, like, on my palettes, like, if this is M. Graham, right? And I think... Um, these are core. I, well, I don't think I know. These are cores because my core watercolor, I only had that one set and it was like, a one of the nature type sets. So this would have been my, my cores and some old, some not old, some other Windsor Newton ones like Potter's Pink is Windsor Newton. I bought a single tube of that. I have iridescent, Daniel Smith, iridescent blue and, and almost all of the palettes because I love it so much. But most of the time, like if I have my other palette, it's all Daniel Smith, right? Like I'm trying, I try to separate them based on not color. You, you know me, I, I like I like to sort my supplies not by likes, but by manufacturer. <laughs> I know a lot of people that fluster that frustrates them all get out. They'd rather see everything all together, but no, I I sort my things by manufacturer. Like I like to have my 
rather than having every red colored pencil together or pencil crown together, right? I have to have my Prisma colors together. I have to have my Polychromos together. I have to have my Pablo's, you know, my Karen Dosh. Like they have to be separate. <laughs> all of these were tube paints. Yeah, I have tubes of all of these. Oh no, that's not tube. These are my. Those. That's the um, Prima and Jane Davenport ones. But all, all my M. Graham, Daniel Smith. Well, not all of them, because I do have a couple uh, sticks, or a uh, couple that Sarah gifted me, and then or shared part of with me, and then a couple of the Daniel Smith watercolor sticks. So mostly they're all tubes, right? These are Daniel Smith in here. Daniel Smith in here. This was a Dan one of the crayon ones. Do they call them crayons? These are all Daniel Smith from the wonderful Zandra. But I like the tube watercolors. But then I like to put, I like palettes. So I put all, I had to put all the tubes in the palettes. So this was fun. Is this completely dry? Now, let's go back to what Daniel Donaldson says. Now, look, we got all this. i put my paint, this one to the side. Don't mingle. You can't mingle brand. No, you can't mingle brands. I just, the way I create, right, or the way I like to compare and contrast, whatever, like I like the, I like my, I mean, I have all my color pencils together, but, you know, I don't have all the green. All right. So we did all of those. Oh, we painted. And she didn't drop in as much paint. Like I, I have some super saturated paint. She was using some pretty muted washes. Um. Define interval pedals and posies with visual tension. Okay, so once the illustration is dry, use your pencil to add visual tension by tracing over some, not all, of the original pencil lines as shown. I didn't put any pencil lines. Did I miss the step? Uh, start by adding a bit more pencil where lines join, intersect, overlap. Resist the urge to trace over all your original pencil work. I didn't have any pencil work. So I guess she... I guess she must have did more posy or, or more of the flower. Um, I guess she wanted to be more deliberate where she would put the water. Add marker details. Create some serious pops of color and details. Use the side of a brush marker to add dots from the center of some of the posies outwards. Finish by adding tiny dots with fine colored tip, fine tip colored markers, some smaller posies. And then that's it. All right. So let's just take a heat gun to it, make sure it's dry. Heat gun. Still works after 20 years. So she used graphite. So we're just going to use what I have next to me. See what I got in my thing we do over here. First graphite thing I see. Woodless. Uh, this is a Progresso HB. This isn't the one Dee Dee gave me. Hmm. All right. So what she's saying is, is she just used... More. I'm gonna hold. I'm holding this graphite from loosely from the back because that's kind of Danielle Don, Dan, Danielle Donaldson styles more loosey goosey, right? So we're just gonna hold it, and my hand is shaky, so I'm just letting it do its thing over here. We're just creating art for creation's sake. I'm not worried about outcome. It's not about, it's about process, not product, my friends. At this point, anyways. Process, not product. And this is a woodless, what is it? Progresso, which one is it? Uh, H, this is just HB. And 
And the looser sometimes I can breed a better because especially because if my hands are if my hands are shaky like today or extra shaky like today. Oh, it just feels good. Just feeling graphite on paper, which I haven't done in years or a year and a half. Just feels good. Just just the feeling of graphite going across paper. You know what I mean, Vern? Uh, <laughs> maybe for those that haven't, you know, maybe some of uh, some of my viewers haven't gone a year and a half or two years without drawing anything or really picking up a pencil and just doing this in a year and a half. That's a little boxy over there. So when it says markers, as you know, we have um, options when it comes to markers. <laughs> Do, oh, thanks, Josie. So we have some options. Do we want to, we've got Pascas, paint. Do we, go, do we bust out the paint pen markers or just a regular old, should we bust out our pit pens? Anything but, I'm not, anything but alcohol. Which one should I? I guess maybe we should make it mixed media and use the paint pens. Well, it's going to be mixed media adding markers anyways. Don't get me wrong. But let's, let's add some paint. I like how that looks. Can you even see where I put the pencils, my friends? I just like loosely... Sorry, the focus is weird, guys. I apologize. Focus is super weird. All right. It's also hard for me to see color the way that this is. So we've got a little pencil work going on over here. Outline some of that stuff. It needs black. I'm feeling, I'm feeling it. All right. So let's get out the Poscas. What color should we use? Let's see. And, you know, a lot of you guys know my philosophy. Right now, I'm using what's around me. I don't know. We needed a graphite. I just picked up the first one that was over here. So excuse my reach, my friends. Got my paint markers over here. I'm right beside the camera. Sorry. All right. So we got those bad boys. Uh, I've got to deal with those later. Liquid. I uh, hope these aren't dried out. I have not used these in a year, uh, in a long time. All right. What color? So we're working with primaries, red, yellow, and blue. What color should we add some accents with? Daniel, Don, let me look. Let me find the uh, back to the her original project. She was adding. Well, she used a. This is a Faber Castell pit pen. I can tell right there. But she was just using the brush to do little thingamadoos like that. But see, I used a lot more vibrant. Uh, <laughs> the paint I used was a little bit more vibrant than her washes, more diluted washes there. But I do, look at this. I just happen to have a Faber-Castell big brush pit pen right beside me. So let's just tap it down like she just showed us. It's black, so maybe not the right color, but. So I'm just using the edge of the big brush marker. But it always feels good, eh, when you can pick up a pit big brush pen that you haven't used in four years or five years and it works perfectly. That feels good. But I appreciate every one of you being here. I know I've been out of the game for a long time. Literally years. I'm just kind of stamping the side. But man, these these Faber Castell pit pens definitely stood that withstood the temp the test of time. Just 
just add the black to the middle. Do we have an odd number here? Two, four, six, seven. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I'm working on this, and then I'd be ticked off at myself if I did all this and then realized I didn't even have a nice odd number. Oh, I like that. Look at that. That's pretty. That little black, the little black adds something nice to it. Maybe not that one up in the mess, in the hot, hot mess up in that corner, but this one's pretty. Look at this. All right, focus, my friends. Hold on. Let me see if I can hold this steady. Sorry, guys. We're using what we have, starting with what we have. Start where you are, use what you have. There we go. So we have a little graphite. We have a little, look at that, granulation. Yum, oh, bloomage. Yum, oh, bloomage. I like it. I'm tempted because I was using graphite for some reason. I want to like, and I, you know, like I said, I, I never took art in school. I have a not formally trained artist. So, which is sometimes a benefit because I just break the rules. Somebody probably out there that went to fine art school is like, what is she's using her finger to blend that graphite? Like, I don't know. I'm just doing it, my friends. Well, I guess I could have got out a tortillon or a blending stump or something. But yeah, I like those pencil lines. So let's go for a different pencil, a little bit darker. That's HB. So what else do I got going on over here? Do I have a darker something that I can add almost like another, what's this? Prisma Ebony? Yes, please. That's now that you can tell I sharpened that bad boy with my pencil sharp, my electric pencil sharpener. Again, I'm just gonna hold it from like the very end just to be more loose. I blend it a little bit. And I used to say this all the time if anybody remembers. I used to be messy on purpose. Then people don't know. Like, oh yeah, I did this on purpose. <laughs> so when you make a hot mess, and it's always So what I mean is I'm holding it at the very end and my hand is shaking. Like if I look at it, you can see. Like I don't have a shaky hand. I've got tremors, right? And I have for my whole life, even as a kid. So I'm just being messy on purpose now. Ah, I like it. Uh, look at a lot. So we didn't end up using any paint pens after all that. I'll put this back. Oh, sweet goodness. Oh, my. Oh, gosh. So I stood up. Uh, this drop foot, my friends. Uh, I don't know. Hopefully soon I can get some type of cat skin or something. The last thing I need to be doing is tripping or falling because of my drop foot. Anyway, I like it. Do we keep it in the book? Do we take it? No, I, you know me. I keep it in the book. But some things, everybody, some things never change. Some things will never change. Archival Black. I just... Uh, it's something, inking edges of everything is something I started in the early 2000s with my scrapbooking. I inked the everything, the edges of absolutely everything. And I carried on to my art and art journaling. I like the messiness of it. That's just, I think it adds a little bit of something, a little frame. That's why I have so many black ink pads everywhere in all states of... <laughs> I 
and at all levels of dryness, I should say, or well, moistness. I guess some of them are some are moist, some are dry. All right, I'm gonna do 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 do. We are going to write the date on here. Up here somewhere. Let us get a scrap sheet of paper. No, a room full of paper and not a scrap sheet. I just need a piece of scrap paper so that to protect my hand. I just ripped this out. When I say protect, I shouldn't say I'm protecting my hand. I'm protecting the the rest of my work from my hand. All right. Let us get our everybody's favorite pen, Uniball. Not everybody's favorite pen. Quite a few of our favorite pens. Uniball Signal. Or no, sorry, not Signal. These are Vision Elites. Excuse me. Vision Elite. I have worn out, I don't know how many Vision Elite pens, completely used up. So I just bought actually the, on Amazon, you bought like a three pack of just the refills. Cause I have quite a few of the pens. Like, so I just bought the refills. All right. Today is Friday, all day. My hands are super shaky. Friday. Hopefully, the more I practice my lettering again and do all this type of stuff, that my hands won't be as I'll be able to control the tremors in my hands more. I need some more coffee. What time of the day is it? Three o'clock? Simon snoring over on the couch. And it's a, so Simon has been off work for quite a, uh, been laid off for quite a while too. And, um, but he's still keeping his midnight schedule. Steep, still pretty much sleeping during the day and staying up later at night. What is today? The is the eighth. That's a rough looking eight. My eight looks like. <laughs> Friday, May 8, 2020. Daniel Donaldson. Exercise. Live. Did I lose chat? Or everybody? Not, not that you have to chat. I just wondered if... Uh, is my system messed up or if um I'm just going to make sure this is dry. Keep going. And it is a uh, permanent ink, so as long as it's dry, I'll be able to. I'm just going to use the, what's left here. Let's spray. This is uh, Da Vinci. Usuri Sable. 
and 36, number two, number two round. But there is something about, like you saw in my swatching, there is something about working with these tiny brushes that I really, I really like. Either I have, for me, it's either like super tiny or ginormous and nowhere in between. Right? So it's like I've got a number two, a number zero or double zero or, you know, like 26. <laughs> And hopefully you guys can't hear whoever's upstairs talking. Hopefully my background, my camera is blocking out Simon snoring, people upstairs talking. <laughs> Actually, I have some on this palette. And that's the thing about watercolors. This is super old, but nothing's stopping. Just because this palette has paint on there that hasn't been reconstituted in two years doesn't mean it's not still good. That's the fun thing about gouache and watercolor. You could have the tiniest bit of something for two years and look, I could still use it. <laughs> oh, my word. I'm not going to let myself do it again, though, my friends. No matter what, I have to change. I have to break. This is the time I am breaking the cycle. I want a, I want a successful life. I do not... I do not want to deprive myself anymore of the things that bring me joy. And that is all up in, all up in my control. It's all up to me. If I just focus on getting the right help. A little muddy mess going on over there. You get a fine, yeah, exactly, Jane. That's the thing about you, Suri Say, but like the, these Da Vinci, these fancier brushes, right? You get the finest of line, but let me tell you, I can get so, there's so much paint, you know, pigment load on, on these fancy brushes. Like it's the finest of line, but let me tell you, I can draw that line for a long time. <laughs> it holds a lot of paint in that tiny little thing. All right, you know, you know what this needs, my friends? Some stamping, some stampage. And it, you know, with my watercolor brushes, very important when the, to lay them dry, lay them flat to dry. You don't want to get the, the water built up into your ferrule, especially you guys know me. If my acrylic brushes, <laughs> the ones I art journal with, whatever, I'm just using cheap paint with or whatever, like the tackle on brushes, whatever. I leave them in water for days and it doesn't matter, but I really try to take care of my, if I'm using my fancy, my fancy watercolor, fancier watercolor brushes, I try to take care of them. All right. Some things never change. So I like, I want to, it needs some stamping. I don't know, some words, whatever. We're going to just use whatever's around me. Excuse me, I'm right beside. I'm right beside. Let's see, I have some stampage over here. I don't know. Look, an old one from Michael's or somewhere, I don't know, cost $1.49. Now, like I said, I have different ink pads. I need to find a black archival pad that is, well, this one's blue. We can use the blue one, cobalt. Again, cheap stamp. I think it was like the dollar spot. It was a dollar fifty. It's from Michaels or something. I don't know. Let's see. Making sure. Let's 
straight up and down. Off stamp. No, I'm not getting too much off stamp on that. And a little texture. I got me an right, itty bitty background. I'm going to use something different. So let's see. First thing I come across over here is what we're going to use. I have, I know I have stamps in here. We're just going to, oh, look, I have some uh, in this particular one is the uh, stamps that I have from uh, Tracy Bautista. Tracy Bautista. Not that it goes with this particular page, but that's what's in here. Old uh, mm. Actually, there's nothing in that one that I can really use. Well, I guess I could use this. Why not? Use what you have, what's around. One sign painters use to get a letter on a window. They are wispy at the very tip with a thicker... What? A letter on the window? Have you tried a dagger brush? Is this is this a dag? Uh, okay. Um... Well, I have mop brushes, so I did buy, what's a dagger? So I do have mop brushes, and then, like I said, I bought this fancy calligraphy brush, this, like, this super fancy bad boy. That, that's not that, though. I'm going to have to Google it. A dagger. Because this is not, that's not a dagger. That's considered oval. Uh, my big one. Or is it just like, excuse me while I Google that because I'm confused. A dagger. I know, I've heard it before. Like, I, I need to go read a, uh, a good art uh, watercoloring book and remind myself of all the terminologies. It's because it's been a few years, so now I'm forgetting all the... Oh, one of those bad boys. Oh, I saw somebody use one of those. That is one style I don't think I bought. Um, I think Kathy. Yeah, that's that's probably the only, not probably the only. I was afraid. I don't say afraid. I never bought any of those. That was the one style I don't have. I have a lot of rounds. I have you know, script, black velvet script, but I never bought, I think black velvet has some nice dagger one. Now I remember, they look like this, my friends. Um, there's a Princeton, oh look, there's a Princeton one right here. Sometimes they're called swords. I'm just looking at my Yeah, that was one style of brush that I did not pick up. Just because it looked funny and I didn't know how to use it. But I don't know if I saw Kathy Arbor using one. Or like, like I said, it's been a few years since I did any of this watercolor stuff. So I can't remember who I was watching or why I thought I needed a dagger. But I never did buy one. There's, But there was a nice one. Yeah, this Princeton... There's a nice Princeton Neptune. This one's only $15 Canadian, size 25 Princeton Neptune dagger. Anyway, that's in, that's in the future. Let us see. This is like Corgit on this one. So when I have a big background stamp and I want to add a little bit of background of, of this type of thing, I need a lot of things. I need to... <laughs> oh, my goodness. All, all night last night, all I could think about was those... Gouache. I didn't break down. I didn't break down and buy any gouache. 
so I just uh, lightly inked some spots. Not I did not ink the entire the entire stamp, and I'm not even going to stamp the entire stamp. I just want a little texture around places, right? So I'm not. I'm making a hot mess. And this is why we made the leftover journals from before, even stamping wise, right? Like if I still have a little ink left over on my stamps, Bridget and Cheryl use daggers in decorative painting. I bet you I probably, oh yeah, I probably still have some dagger. I, I wonder if she ever used them in the one stroke painting, uh, kind of dewberry. So, anyways, guys, we did some art today. We did some chat. We did do it. We did everything but uh, cleaning. Didn't do any. Didn't do any organizing today. But we did some art for the first time in a while. Yeah, yeah. Same here, Therese. We're gonna. Well, I don't think we're gonna get ten centimeters of snow, but we're gonna get some snow. <laughs> it's supposed to be zero tonight, um, or go down below zero tonight. So it says there's risk of snow. I don't think it's ten centimeters, but we'll get snow. The itty bitty stamps. It's a bit of over there. I can see them. I found them the other day. So these like trap flicks. There's certain things. So if you notice, um, and I don't know if trap flicks is a bot, but there is something that there there is a. If you get them on your own channel, you see those things where people are like, "I want to be your friend." Do not go to their. Do not go to their. YouTube page and subscribe. It has something, it's some type of phishing thing. So anytime you see like certain things and it says, I want to be your friend, whatever, don't do it. I've, I've been blocking them. I've read somewhere that these are I'm not saying that the, whoever just entered the chat, they're trap flicks. Uh, sometimes these bots come in that there's, there's weird bots out there that'll say, love your video. I want to be friends. And then what happens is you go to their YouTube channel, you press subscribe, and then they get your email address, right? Because when people subscribe to you on e it goes, well, lots of times it goes to her. So just be careful. Not, not sure. My apologies, Trap Mix, if you're not a bot, but there, be careful of those things. I, I deleted them twice on a, uh, already on a couple of my videos. It just says like things like, I love your channel. Let's be friends. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't interact with it. Don't hard it. Don't nothing. Delete. Delete. So we had some fun today. Made some messes. Oh, let's let's check out our uh, other experimentals over here. That was fun. First time watercoloring at all in you know over two years. So. I like how that turned out. Looks nice. I enjoy looking at it. I enjoy I enjoyed creating it. So um, yeah, I enjoyed it. So we used arches. Later on tonight, I'll have to use the other side to see if we get any difference because, like I said, I think I used the wrong side. But absolutely, you can definitely tell with the arches watercolor paper that that the how it disperses the paint, right? How it holds the water. Obviously, it's the cotton in the paper, and that's the whole point of better paper. But I can definitely see, yes, how the how it regulates the flow of water, how Arches regulates the flow of water compared to some of the cheaper stuff. But yeah, this is the rougher side, and this is a smoother side. So I think I was supposed to use the rough side. <laughs> Later on, and then that other paper from the fluid, which is good, but I think I just started with a damaged piece of paper. I mean, that's a pretty nice, I, even though where my uh, fingerprint was from, I guess I had oil on my hands. It's pretty solid wash. Like I was able to get a pretty smooth wash on that fluid paper, but this is garbage just because the paper was damaged to begin with. That's probably why it was taken from the block. You know what I mean? Like it was already halfway off the block. 
So we did some painting, we did some talking. It's been a few hours. I've probably streamed, what, five hours today so far, guys. I really appreciate everybody being here. Um, like I was saying earlier, I know, I know I'm know i a little manic right now. I understand, and I mean, that's what's important. As long as I can um, cognitively be aware of my mental state and be able to use the tools uh, and professional help that is being afforded to me, I I know I'm going to get in a better place. Bear with me. Uh, we're going to this is going to be a manic ride for a couple of weeks until I get back into the swing of things and just start enjoying what I'm doing again and all that stuff. So I appreciate everybody being here and <laughs> being on this crazy ride with me. I absolutely will see everybody tomorrow. I don't know if I'll be back tonight or not. I'm going to go eat some lunch do some stuff, think about some stuff, but I feel good. We created some art today. We bought a color for the first time in two years, <laughs> almost two years, I guess. Um, I do have to do a little bit of cleaning tonight because I didn't, I haven't done any of my little bit, little, I haven't done any clean, my organizing yet today because we just kind of came in and I just started showing stuff. So I shall see everybody tomorrow for sure, if not tonight. Was that Joyce? Thanks, guys. Thank you, Kay. Thanks, Nell. Oh, I did see your message on uh, Messenger, my drop. I did that today. All right, guys. Talk to you soon. Much love.